What's up, everybody? F Brock One hitting you with another video. Uh, I've been away way too long, man, and I just wanted to come on out here. I was feeling kind of down and out because I only get to really play around with my car in the driveway and maybe ride around the local neighborhood. But I haven't had a chance to really do anything because I'm still in this boot, man. Fortunately, I'm in the boot. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, at the end of March, I ended up tearing my Achilles tendon, shooting ball over there, of all things. But I tore my Achilles tendon, so I have been down from doing anything, really, uh, to include even going to work. I've been on leave away from work. And uh, fun fact, just to let y'all know, this is the second time I actually tore my Achilles tendon. The first time was my right one. This time I popped the left one, but I tore the right one uh, while I was still on active duty in the military, and that put me down for a long time. So as soon as it happened, I knew what, <laughs> as soon as it happened, I knew what went down. Uh, I was feeling very upset at myself because, you know, you, I'm not getting any younger, man. And I probably shouldn't have been out there playing as hard as I was. But I ended up tearing my Achilles tendon. And uh, so I'm here on these stupid crutches and have been for the last almost seven weeks. Uh, I, after I had surgery, I actually was in a cast immobilized for the first six weeks. So this is like my really like my week and a half, first week and a half out of the cast, being able to walk around and actually put some pressure on my foot and start stretching out my tendon and getting it, you know, getting it back to health. With that, I wanted to come on out and give you an update as to what's going on with the Mako project. Pretty dirty. I haven't had a chance to wash it in almost two months. And, uh, but I did have the opportunity to come on out here and play around with stuff that I've been wanting to do for a while anyway. So the first thing that I happened to do was change out my oil cap. Uh, I was having some, some smoking issues from my exhaust. Every time I, you know, do a watt pull or something, as soon as I start letting up, I just see, you know, smoke coming out my exhaust. I thought maybe, you know, I had some blow by on the turbo, but it ended up being, uh, and this is for everybody out here. If you're running like a chasings or any, any cap, but I had a chasings titanium cap. What I didn't do is when I put the new cap on, I wasn't running the gasket and it looked kind of like this without the gasket on. But in my case right now, the gasket is still on there. It's just, it stuck to the, the fuel hole for whatever reason. But if you don't have a gasket, you're going to get smoked. And I was trying, I could not figure out for the longest what was going on and why my car was smoking. And it ended up being that gasket. So, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I didn't know this Mishimoto cap would fit our vehicles, but you know, just doing my online research and, you know, going to all these old forums out there and stuff, I found out what the di dimensions are for the Accord 2.0 and Civic Type R, any two liter 10th generation motor. I found out what the thread pitch was and I'd been wanting this particular uh, cap. So I went ahead and got it and it turned out really, really good. And um, if you're thinking about getting it, it's about $50. It's not that expensive. I got mine off Amazon of all places. And it turned out to be the right fit, and it was good. Um, I'm also, just to give you an update on the fuel system, uh, I am up and running with the port injection fuel system. It's running perfectly. The only issue I'm having right now with my car in general is boost control. And I, I kind of got it narrowed down to what is going on because 
you know, I'm in the e-tuning process. And if you're not familiar with e-tuning, uh, the way it works is, uh, and I actually like D-Rob's new system he has. Once you let D-Rob know uh, what exactly you're trying to get done, uh, you're going to go out to his website. Obviously, you'll uh, pay for the e-tuning service. Uh, when he gets to you, which is pretty quick, he'll send you a uh, a link to go to you'll have a user id and password and that'll be the portal that you'll upload and download all your data logs and your calibrations so he'll give you the initial calibration uh you upload it uh usually with the e-tuning process you're gonna do um a 15 minute cold start, 15 minute cruise, 15 minute stop and go driving, meaning in stop and go traffic. And then you'll do one watt pull at the end of that um, on a flat surface. And what you do is during that whole period, you try to stay on that same stretch of road so the pulls will provide similar results. So long story short, I'm doing the e-tuning process, which if you haven't done it before, uh, the pros of it is it gives you the feeling that you're in charge of your own tuning. Uh, it's on your time, so you don't have to rush it through. You don't have to travel. It's all via online services. So it's very, if you're a person that's pressed for time or you just don't want to travel, you know, e-tuning is a very good service. But if you're not familiar with how to work K-Tuner, if you're not familiar with your car, really, uh, I would highly recommend if you can go in person to do a dyno tune, it will be a lot easier because that gives uh, Derek the or any tuner the ability to get hands on with your vehicle. They're right there. They can address anything that they may have questions about. And so, you know, it saves you a lot of time. Whereas it might take you two or three weeks to finish your e-tune uh, at a dyno tuning service, it could take a couple hours. So uh, pros of of, of e-tuning, uh, it's easy, it's fun, it gives you control, and it's something that uh, you can do on your time. Cons, if you get frustrated easy, stay away from it. Pros of dyno tuning, which is going in person and putting your car on the actual uh uh, Dyna Jet or uh, Dyna Pack or Mustang Dyno or whatever you're using is that tuner has full authority over your car and you just sit back, watch him, and he gives you with results. So back to the regularly scheduled programming. Um, yes, the port injection is working just fine. Uh, I don't really want to, didn't really want to discuss it that much because. I'm just not fully up. And until I get fully up, I consider the car down. So right now I'm able to 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 um, hold about 31 PSI a boost. Perfect. And, you know, we ran into issues with it not holding after shifting from fourth to fifth gear. Uh, it would just slowly decrease and it just would never recover. I'm thinking uh, it wasn't a boost leak. I replaced all my vacuum lines. I made everything, made sure everything was tight. So I'm thinking that uh, the bypass valve may have, the diaphragm may have went bad. So I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna test that to see if that works. If it doesn't work, my next step would be to replace the uh, wastegate actuator, which I don't, I'm hoping that that's not the issue, but either way, they're both, fairly inexpensive fixes and um, hopefully I'll be back on the road sooner than later uh, as far as you know racing and all that good stuff yeah I'm still interested in it I know people are making these big numbers um, but to be honest man if at this point with meth and MHI or, or Garrett or even an EFR turbo you can't run 11s, you know, there's something wrong. Because that's that's pretty much the, um, the pathway to getting to 11s. In my case, um, my goal originally was to run 11s just using ethanol. And I actually came very close. Uh, if you remember, I ran a 1204 with just E30. 
and I think I still can do it. That's that's my primary goal. I'm not going to strip my car down. I'm not going to do all this other stuff. I'm not going to compromise blowing up my car just to get, you know, some record. But, you know, if it does happen because things do happen, I am prepared for stuff like that, you know. But am I trying to destroy my car? No. A lot of people ask me what, how many miles I have on it. I only have 20,000 miles on this car. So, you know, it's... I like keeping cars for at least 10 to 15 years. I'm, I'm not one of those people who buy new cars or lease new cars every three or four years. So this car is going to be with me for a while, you know, and of course I also have the 350 Z, but you know, that's really not going to be a daily driver because, you know, it's kind of in the same boat as this car because I'm doing all these upgrades to it. So, um, outside of, you know, I have my Tahoe, this is my daily driver and I treat it like that. I don't abuse it. You know, I love my car and, you know, hopefully it'll last me a while while also allowing me to, to achieve some of the goals that I want to. So I know this video is a little bit longer than I, I wanted it to be originally, but I just wanted to give you an update. Mako Project still is in order and I'll be back sooner than you know. F Brock one y'all. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share. If you enjoy my content, I'm out.